uh, Michael Grinker with Trojan Battery Company. Thanks very much for speaking with us. Of um, we're on the first day in Solar Europe, EES Europe, glorious sunny day here in Munich. Um, and there's a couple of things that I thought we'd talk about while we've got the opportunity. And one thing that I'm talking about with most of the people that I'm meeting um, is really sort of the level of education and understanding that's required perhaps not even just from the general public, but also from stakeholders and yeah. energy industry professionals on what energy storage can do, both in combination with renewables and on its own. And yeah, essentially what's, what the real, you know, the real aspects of that are. Yeah, I mean, it, thanks first of all for, for the opportunity. I think the, you need to look into what markets we're talking about. Like once, like develop, um, like markets in the developed world where you go into like a grid tie kind of situation, I think the education is going through the distribution, right? and actually it's pretty much there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the, the more interesting part is on the, let's say, off-grid, poor grid kind of environment, where a lot of times actually also stakeholders, like people that finance projects, don't have the right education, or like a limited part of the education, um, to really make the, the decisions, right? I mean, like right now, everyone is marketing their products as best as they can, yeah. um, but not always have those people access to the full information and have the full understanding of what that means for that application, for that project itself. Right. There's a lot of economic decisions to be made around that and a lot of kind of what you might call civil planning decisions as well, I guess. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's part of your role as a provider of the technology to take your potential customers and stakeholders through these different options and help them understand it? Now we're trying to see that from a, a, the energy requirement itself, right? Even though we are not, like, we are focused on lead acid. We have lead acid batteries flooded as well as AGM, maintenance-free batteries. We try to pet, put all that stuff out of the discussion. They're like, okay, what energy requirement do you really have? In what kind of application? What is the budget that you have? How long do you think the project needs to last? And based on that, we should take an energy uh, storage uh, decision. So. I know lithium has been like, an, an, like everyone is talking about lithium, right? Uh, all, but there's there are other technologies still around that may make make sense, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you said it from the from the social spec, uh, aspect as well. Right? You talk about uh, from the lead acid perspective, um, that that battery is 99% recyclable. I mean, not many people know that actually. Like even Germans who love recyclability and all that, not not everyone knows that you can recycle a, a lead acid battery that much. Mm -hmm. right? So I think yeah. there are various aspects we need to take into consideration. Can you maybe just give our readers a couple of examples of the sorts of projects and the sorts of applications that they're delivering off-grid using your batteries? Yeah, I mean, it, again, it depends a little bit by region, right? So obviously we were born and raised in the golf sector, right? So we actually those golf cars and flow machines and so on, like that we're really strong at. For over here, for all the parts of the renewable energy, uh, we, we can actually see from anything between a solar home systems, let's say in Africa, um, up to solar streetlights, um, to what we see here, for instance, like powering banking services and banking solutions, up to larger uh, like industrial or commercial, um, like backup power, full power, off-grid power, all those kind of solutions. I think very often uh, those projects are mission critical, so you need to have um, any component that lasts a very long time, right? And doesn't fail after a while. So there, there's often a business case behind it. People are counting on that. Um, if, they, if that fails, you know, they lose a lot of money. I mean, sometimes even you put people's life in danger. Right? Yeah, and it's often it's public money as well, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, so, yeah. exactly. Something that needs to be done responsibly. Obviously. Yes. A lot of the stuff we cover is lithium ion, and that tends to be more in the grid connected situations. Tell us a little bit about how you guys view lead acid's continuing role in energy storage, both with solar and not necessarily with solar. Sure. So lithium technology is fantastic. It's great for the energy storage uh, industry, right? So I think we need to go further in that innovation. The challenge is I think we need to pull down to the project and what's the value for the end customer as well as the one that actually puts the money out for that particular project. I think it, uh, right now we see a lot of lithium coming in um, just based on a marketing promise. Um, we still need to follow actually whether that's true, that really true that this battery is going to last 10, 15 years. Of that promise, most of the companies have not been around for that long. Yeah. But ne nevertheless, I think it's part of the energy storage uh, selection that we, that we have nowadays. We're also going to bring out a, a lithium battery very soon. 
So the question is again, what business case, what, what is the value for the, for the end customer? Today, the, we have in various regions, like the, the question is, what are you going to do with the battery afterwards? A renewable energy, uh, sorry, a lead acid battery, uh, fully recyclable. Um, you have infrastructure in place. The battery manufacturers, no matter what kind of battery, uh, the lead acid battery they produce, they like to have those batteries back to get that lead back into the, the system. You don't have that situation with lithium today, right? So there is not always an infrastructure in place where you can, like once the battery is end of life, and that also happens with lithium, it's not yeah. endless life, um, what are you gonna do with that battery in the end? You don't want to have that worst case, like in, like in Kenya, we, we had once in your, one of your, your articles, where you say like, hey, if the battery is dead, and has been sitting there for 10 years or something. Lead acid batteries are in big demand for being recycled. Actually, the manufacturers pay money to get those batteries back. And that actually also has a social aspect to it. Like you actually could generate jobs with that, uh, with that product, right? Just collecting those batteries back. But for, for energy storage solutions, I think we, we're going to see those different market segments being filled with different kind of technologies, right? Mm -hmm. Very long uh, lasting, very, let's say, like high end um, applications probably will require lithium. But there's a lot of like different lower market segments that are more cost sensitive, that are like they have a different requirements, which are going to be covered with the lead acid batteries. Right? Sure. I think it's going to find its way um, into where into the various market segments, and the, the time really is defined by price. How quickly can the cost go down on from a lithium battery? That's going to be the question. Yeah. I mean, even here, like at, at the at the solar, I mean, many people come in and say, like, I want to have a lithium battery. And then once you actually start asking them about what's your requirement, what's your project, what's, what is the value that you want to generate, you come down to the, the point that actually a lithium battery would be completely overkill, would be oversized. You spend money for, for an application, for, for the storage solution that you don't really need. Mm -hmm. So I think that education needs to reach those users, those decision makers, mm -hmm. to say like, hey, let's take all that sexy technology out of it and say, what do we really need as an energy storage solution? Certainly. We've said before that uh, lead acid is uh, an existing technology, maybe a legacy technology, but obviously you guys are still producing new ones and new systems and you've got one that you've just launched at this show. So I'm wondering, yeah, I mean, where's the scope for improvement still in such an established technology and what have you brought to the latest product? I mean, Trojan focuses on long life. Right, so we believe like our batteries are for those projects where that has to last for a very long period of time. Especially those projects where you want to have a return of investment. Mm -hmm. right? Not for two days or one week kind of projects, it's really for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And that's where we want to, want to continue to improve. Right? So we, are, we, know, we understand maintenance is an issue with our flooded batteries. Right? Even though actually, technically speaking, the flooded one is a better battery because it lasts longer and it's actually cheaper. Yeah. But you don't want to do the maintenance, which yeah, is absolutely fair. Right? Yeah. So we got uh, we, we have an AGM technology that has a very long life that actually is rivaling now the, the gel batteries that are in the market. So we have won a couple of projects just on that basis. Both are maintenance free. The AGM is just a technology more known in the United States, while gel is more known <laughs> over here. Mm -hmm. right? That's at least the feedback we are getting. Yeah. But I think it's overall, we talk about a maintenance-free battery, so you don't have to do anything, and it still lasts much longer than one would expect. So I can only encourage you, or any, any of your readers, do the check. Do the check with every other company as, as, well, Elvis, as well as us, and see how long last those batteries. It doesn't have, very often you see on those specs, like, you know, capacity, whatever, and then you have that capacity for a couple of weeks and then it drops. Yeah. You know, we, we want to have uh, the, our users to have the same capacity for a very, very long time. Right? That's what we stand for. And right? that's what we continue to do. Excellent. And um, yeah, I mean, which, so we're talking, it's suited at off-grid market, so it's enabling energy access, really. Well, we, we're actually looking at all like globally, right? Just the application is a bit different. So while in, in Africa, we're looking more like in the commercial business, mini grid kind of application. Uh, in other regions, you know, we, we look into security border control, uh, like those kind of applications, like Wi-Fi cameras, uh, um, um, lights, lighting systems, right? Uh, but then we also can go into like um, auxiliary power units for vehicles, for instance. Uh, the interesting thing is I just came back from a traffic show, like everyone also there, lithium, 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 and then they have trouble moving lithium batteries around because it's not that easy to get a lithium battery into a, on a plane. Yeah, okay. 
course. Uh, they come back to us like, hey, don't you have a solution that is not as difficult to ship? Right. So we look into AGM. We're actually working on other technologies that may actually go into that. It's not a lithium based, it's lead acid based, but may actually get features into, like, into the market at a different price point that may have a different impact in the market. So we're quite excited about new technologies we are working on. Excellent. Well, Michael, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks right. a lot. Thanks. Cool. I mean, is there anything we didn't cover that you think would be really important while we got a chance? Or? No, I think it's like from, from our perspective, you know, like, you know, we, at the moment, you know, we have what you see basically, right? Uh -huh. I think next year is going to be very exciting. Uh, we're going to look into lithium solution as well. And we started looking into completely new technology, lead acid base, that has features from lithium. Oh, right. right. So we took a like weight and, and you know okay. lot of cost actually. And so is that at the moment strictly off the record, or is that at the moment like you don't want to discuss it too much, right? Because it's still going to be like two years out. Uh -huh. uh, but we got we just got a briefing yesterday. We got really excited, right? So oh, cool. Okay. I think there's something more to come. I think. What happens in general in the energy storage level, like there are a lot of new technologies, innovations coming in um, that are going to change the game again. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, and I'm happy also with new leadership that we are in the, getting in the forefront again.